Hi there. I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm going to tell a little story today about how I got started 30 years ago. So um, I actually had a, a, a business that I, I started in college and had sold that company, and then I went and I said to myself, you know what, I, had a, I bought a new home, I bought cable television. And cable television had just started, and I got 30 channels, okay? Now, how many remember when there was just five channels? ABC, CBS, NBC, right? Uh, independent, PBS. So 30 channels, I ordered the 30-channel package, and I'm going through all 30 channels, and I get to channel 30, and this is what I saw. Bars on the screen, okay? So I was very discouraged because I thought, wow, I'm going to have cable TV. I'm going to have... I'm going to have a 24-hour sports channel. I'm going to have a movie channel. I'm going to have the Discovery Channel. But when I get to Channel 30, that was what I saw. And I, so I called the cable company, and I said, what's going on? I think there's some technical problem. I'm not, it's not coming through Channel 30. They said, oh, no, we don't have enough programming for Channel 30. That's called local access. And that channel is not going to be programmed for a while. So just, you just got to wait, and you know, you're paying for it, but you're not getting anything yet. So... Wow, I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound fair. Uh, you know, what can I do? So the entrepreneurial side of me, right away, my mind was spinning. What potentially could I put on Channel 30? So as a curious entrepreneur, I've always, I go to a lot of trade shows. I do, you know, about 30 some trade shows a year. I happen to be about a week later at the Philadelphia Home Show. And there's a guy at the Philadelphia Home Show, he had a knife in his hand. He's cutting through a Coca-Cola can, then he goes through a hammerhead, then he went through a muffler, cut a sneaker in half. This guy, I found out his name was Arnold Morris. And Arnold, I, he got on break and I said, Arnold, how long have you been doing this? He said, Kevin, I am the number one knife salesman in the world for 30 years, 40 weeks a year. I go all over doing my knife presentation. And let me show you what I did with Arnold Morris. This is 30 some years ago now. Now, you take a tomato, the weight of the knife alone cuts that tomato. Let me ask you something. How many knives do you have at home this sharp? You could drop the tomato on top. Pretty sharp, right? Do you know what one young lady said? <laughs> Can you cut them thin? I said, thin, one tomato will last you all week long. That became one of the first ever infomercials, and Arnold Morris became famous. Arnold, what we did basically is we took that show and we filled Channel 30, but there was Channel 30 in every single local market all around the United States, in every country. In fact, in every city. This Ginsu went on to do over $100 million in sales. The Ginsu infomercial went on. This was a low-budget, $3,500 production that actually went on to do over $100 million in sales. And that's when, in my mind, I said, I need to change the business that I'm in. And right away, I said, well, wait a minute. There's bars on the screen actually all over the world. And so we took the, the, the show and we went into all the different countries everywhere in the world. And so we took the Ginsu knife, dubbed it into 20 languages, into 100 plus countries. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. Arnold Morris was a knife guy that had been doing what he did for many years in front of small groups of 10 people at a time. And what I did with Arnold Morris is I said, how can we take you, Arnold, public? And that's what I'm here to talk about today, is going public with your IPU. And the IPU stands for your intellectual property. So I met Jack LaLanne shortly thereafter. Jack LaLanne, he, I said, how do you stay so in shape? He said, Kevin, I drink carrot juice every morning. The IPU was the Jack LaLanne juicer. So yes. Everybody, I, I went from taxi cab drivers to masseuses that I run into, wherever I go, people are always coming up with ideas. And that has become a secret passion of mine, is to help take people's initial idea, the IPU that they have, and take it public on a global basis. So just talking about Shark Tank a little bit, Shark Tank, every year they get tens of thousands of submissions. But only 300 of those actually get picked to go on the air. Why do these people get turned down? Why do 49 plus thousand people get turned down? Because there's three steps of doing a good presentation and, and, and going public. Discover, demonstrate, and dominate. And in this first step, in the discover step, 
Look for an idea that solves a problem, eases a pain, or improves upon an existing business model. And I loved listening earlier today to Stacy. She sold 12 million mascara sticks. This is unbelievable. This is what, what I say is you must test before you invest. She didn't start right out selling millions of those. She started with a thousand piece order and then it went to the next, to the next, to the next. And so this is what we do. We test before we invest. We go to the QVCs, the HSNs, the Groupons, the Alibabas. We go to, there's a directory of mail order catalogs, 1,500 catalogs, this thick. I ordered every single one of those catalogs at one point I still get them today. For me, it's research of what's going on in every industry. For my wife, it's actually a buying opportunity, okay? So, you know, it cost me a lot of Christmas time. But um, so, and I mentioned trade shows. I go to a lot of trade shows, and, you know, I don't care, the houseware show, the hardware show, the consumer electronics show, et cetera. And I'm finding new ideas and new products. But these are places that you can test your idea, you put it on a shopping channel, you put it on a, on, a, on a network, and we have an internet testing network that we actually use. So after you do the test, then you demonstrate this product by creating the perfect pitch. And this is where people fell down on Shark Tank. They didn't create the perfect pitch. It's called T's, please, and C's. And I'm gonna walk through that, but first let me show you one of the perfect pitches. I think I like it one of the best from Shark Tank. So watch this clip. Hi, I'm Rebecca Riscotti, founder of CityKitty. CityKitty is seeking $100,000 for 15% equity in our company. For the 200 million cat owners around the world, cleaning a litter box is a chore that we all dread. Litter boxes are germ breeding grounds. Kitty litter gets tracked everywhere, they stink up our homes, they cost lots of money to continually fill, and they cause fights in otherwise peaceful households because nobody wants to clean this thing. It's disgusting. And cat owners don't know there's any option. But there is. You can toilet train your cat with City Kitty. <laughs> Take a look here. With City Kitty, the dirty litter box is gone. Your home is cleaner. You're saving money. You're doing good for the environment. And life at home is better for you and your cat. All right, so City Kitty, this was teased. This was grab the audience with an attention-getting problem. Definitely, this was an amazing product. This ended up going on. I'm going to tell you some of the success stories on that. But she showed benefits. Get rid of your litter box. It's healthier. All the different benefits, the magical transformations. And then when she seized, she actually had Barbara Corcoran and I negotiating against each other to invest in that business. And that's what we did. We took, she started with a home video. We took her public. We went nationwide. We got her, the Good Morning America show, the Wall Street Journal, Walgreens all over the place. We basically dominated by going from idea to empire. Let's talk about the history of radio and TV real quick. It took 38 years for radio to get to 50 million people, TV 13 years, the internet four years, iPod three, and Facebook two years to get to 50 million. But in today's world, going public is a lot easier because people like Michelle Fawn, I don't know if any of you have heard of Michelle, Michelle Fawn actually did it by going public. She's been in, she's a, in a billion plus views in a very short period of time. She did it, the power of video. The power of video with your iPhone is so simple because on a daily basis, she creates new product, new videos to take out in the marketplace. 50% of all internet activity is now video. There's 100 million internet users who watch video every day. Video retains users five times longer, creates 50% chance of getting on, the, on, the, on a high Google rank on the first page, and it generates traffic, leads, sales, and profits. And today, there's many better ways than going to a guy like Rupert Murdoch here, okay? Rupert Murdoch is the old school way, and that is a few channels broadcasting to millions. 
Finishing up here, um, just talking about your IPU. You've got the idea, how do you fund it? If you've got money, capital, fine. If you need to raise money, think about crowdfunding. It's a quick, easy way to do it. It's a $5 billion industry. Equity-based crowdfunding is going to be the next big thing. And anyone can invest in you and own a piece of your IPU with crowdfunding. So be, be ready for that. Also, be prepared. You may have a few stumbles. I have to, I can't leave without talking about a couple things that didn't work. I mean, Tony Little is a great example of a guy that did amazing things. One day, he called me. We did a project called Target Training. He says, Kevin, I've hit the bottom. I don't know what to do. I'm, I just, he would actually have been in an accident. And, and I said, Tony, you know, success is being able to go from failure to failure without the loss of enthusiasm. And just then, Tony said, you know what? I think I've got a, an idea for the next one. And here was his next project that came about. I'm working my buttocks. <laughs> if I lean forward, uh -huh. I'm working my chest. I'm working my triceps. I'm working the back of my calves. And I'm working my heart and I'm working my lungs. You can do it. Yes, Tony Little. How many of you have seen Tony Little? An amazing guy. Tony has been on the shopping channels for about 20 years. And um, it, was, it was a great run with Tony. So bottom line is be prepared for stumbles. Be prepared for ups and downs. But I learn as much from my failures as I do my successes. And I carry a card with me. And this is my, my closing thought here today. Um, this card says, life's battles don't always go to the fastest or the strongest. Sooner or later, those who win are those who think they can. And I appreciate you guys having me today and sharing my story. Thank you.